Hello and welcome back to another video. Now today's Wednesday, so this is Waffle on a Wednesday where I answer your questions to the best of my ability. And for those of you that are new here, my name's Mel and I live full time in this Mercedes Sprinter camper van. And occasionally I like to go treasure hunting, but today I'd like to try and earn your subscription. And to do that, I'm going to make this video as entertaining and as informative as I possibly can. So let's crack on and answer some of your questions. Now, did I happen to mention that my channel is all about camper vans? Well, this first question is all about camper van insulation, and it's something that I've never been asked before, and it really did spark an interest in me. So I'm going to start by reading this question out, and this comes from Man Olive. Forgive me if I pronounce your name wrong. Hashtag Waffle on a Wednesday. Hi, Mel. I'm from Slovenia. Absolutely love Slovenia. I did some amazing diving there in Lake Bled. If ever you get the opportunity to go to Lake Bled, then do go there. Although the campsite is quite pricey. Anyway, I'm from Slovenia and I like your content a lot. Thank you. I wonder what do you think about cork insulation? It's natural, it's not flammable, and I plan to insulate my van with it. I wonder why there are so few videos regarding this. Am I missing something? Is it a good and cheap van insulation option? What do you think, Mel? Well, man, Olive, like I said, this question really did spark an interest in me. So much so that I took to Google and I took to doing some research. And it turns out I really don't think you're missing anything. I think everybody else is missing a real trick here. From the research I've done, cork makes a fantastic insulator. It's completely waterproof. It's mold proof. There's no VOCs involved. It's completely natural. It's good for the environment. Whether it's cheap or not, I don't really know. But saying that, I'd still like to share some of the facts I found on Google. Take a look at this. Cork is naturally water resistant. That's why there is a wine cork industry. Think about it. Natural cork keeps seawater from ruining the champagne that was salvaged from the Titanic. So yeah, it would appear cork is waterproof. So what happens when cork gets wet? Cork does not absorb water and mould does not grow on cork. So water, moisture or high humidity is not a problem with glued down cork tiles. There you go. I mean, one of the biggest problems with camper vans in the winter is moisture and mould. So it would appear that cork is moisture and mould resistant. Is cork damp proof? Cork has outstanding damp proof and insulating properties and is extremely versatile material that can be used for many ins insulation purposes. Thanks to its damp proof properties, cork is perfect in any environment where there is risk of damp penetration. It's looking even better, don't you think? Now, regular viewers of mine will know that a couple of years ago, I was really sick. I got an incredibly bad lung infection and it was all brought on, I believe, by having damp mould in my van throughout the winter. So this is something I always address when people ask me these questions about damp and mould grown inside your camper van. It's something that I have experienced the tail end of. And I always can't try and bring this up and try and help people combat this situation for that very reason that it can be a real serious health issue. So during the course of my research I came across this little article and it says that cork suppresses the growth of microorganisms such as mould and bacteria. So it would appear that cork is a fantastic insulator and it would be really good to use in a camper van. After all it's moisture and mould resistant, it's got great thermal properties and most importantly it is environmentally friendly because it comes from a renewable source. So why aren't people using cork to insulate their camper vans? Beats me, that's for sure. Thanks for the great question, Malov, and good luck with your van build. Please do let us know if you do decide to use cork to insulate your van. I'd be really interested to see how that works out for you. Just remember, keep it simple, keep it safe. Cheers. Mel, do you have to have a sticker on your van if you are carrying gas LPG? This comes from Trevor Phillips. Yes, Trevor. Absolutely, 100% you should have a sticker on the back of your van if you are carrying LPG. This is so that if you are unfortunate enough to be involved in an accident, the emergency services have fair warning that you have got a bottle of gas in your van and they can deal with your vehicle in the appropriate manner. 
Thanks for the great question. Now, last week, I was asked what advice I would give to somebody traveling abroad for the first time in their camper van. And part of my advice was that if, you, if it is your first time traveling abroad or driving abroad, then when you come off the ferry, follow somebody that has a local number plate. That way you can become accustomed to driving on the wrong side of the road. Just simply pick a car with foreign number plates on it and follow it until you do become accustomed to driving on the wrong side of the road. And Neil Burgess commented and says, follow a local. Don't they get a bit annoyed when you rock up on their drive? <laughs> Yes, thanks. I did find this video amusing. Well done, Mel. Well, thank you, Neil. Your comment was certainly amusing as well. Now, talking about amusing a comment, amusing a comments? Talking about amusing comments, I think it's this time. It's <laughs> Get it out, Mel. Talking about amusing. Now, talking about amusing comments, I think it's time for this week's Troll of the Week. Troll of the Week. Well, this week's Troll of the Week really doesn't disappoint. So congratulations to Justin Liney. You are this week's Troll of the Week. Watch out. Hustler Mel is trying to flog us some stuff again. <laughs> I'm a hustler. Oh, yeah. That sounds pretty cool. Thank you, Justin. Well, Justin doesn't just leave it there. He goes on to comment on one of my other videos. More free stuff, eh? Always on the hustle, you UK van life YouTubers. We normal full-timers have to pay. We don't appreciate the constant bias selling from you Burks. Burke? So I've gone from a hustler to a Burke. Don't know if I like that or not. I prefer the hustler. To give your audience a better option to what you've been paid to recommend, I use the new Anchor 767, and it beats the Bluetti in every way cheaper too. Well Justin you'll be really surprised how many times I've turned down Anchor offering me free products. <laughs> Maybe I won't next time. Maybe next time Anchor offer me a power pack I shall accept it so I can do a non-biased re product review. But yes you're right I am a big Bluetti fan and I don't actually get everything sent to me free from Bluetti. I do actually pay for some of those products as well. After all, that's exactly what I did last month. And I made a video all about it. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link to it up here. <laughs> but you will be really surprised how many companies contact me and I don't ever bother responding. I get offered all sorts of stuff on a daily basis. Maybe I should start accepting all that stuff and making a, a, a weekly feature of like NAF product of the week or something like that along them lines. What do you think? Do you think I should accept everything that gets sent to me? Do you think that would make interesting content? Do leave a comment down below. What's your opinion? Should I just accept everything or should I carry on swiping left and deleting those emails? Let me know what you think. I'd be really interested to know. <laughs> But anyway, not everybody thinks I'm a Burk. Some people actually like my channel. Allow me to digress. Best van channel on YouTube at the moment. Keep it up, Mel. That comes from Adam Mills. Thank you, Adam. That's very kind of you. And it's comments like that that really do, really does make a huge difference to my um, mental attitude, if you like. Yeah, so thank you. I'll do my best to keep up the great content for your viewing pleasure. I don't know if it's that great, but I'll do my best anyway. Now I'd like to say thank you to Van Life Fest for awarding me the prestigious award of being YouTube Channel of the Week. <laughs> Incredible. YouTube Channel of the Week. And I quote from their website, whether your van or motorhome is built or bought, there's lots to learn from daily maintenance to the wallet draining essential upgrades. This week, we'd love you to check out the excellent Mel's Big Van Small World. So once again, thank you to Van Life Fest for awarding me YouTube Channel of the Week. Thank you very much. That means so much. I was really chuffed when I saw that, so thank you. And it's also comments like this that lift my spirits. Absolutely awesome idea. I have bought the same tank for my van. Thanks, Mel. And that comes from living the dream, building the dream. Well, thank you very much and good luck with your fuel tank for your diesel heater. Speaking of which, Easter 24 Adventures asks, hashtag waffle on a Wednesday. Hi, Mel. Great video. Thank you very much. Quick question. We love a quick question. 
<laughs> how much diesel does your max speeding rods heater consume on average regards martin well martin i can't tell you exactly how much diesel my two kilowatt diesel heater consumes but i can say it costs me roughly around about 15 pound a month during the dead of winter so it's really cheap to run bearing in mind i do actually use red diesel as well but saying that red diesel has increased significantly in price over the past year so i'm actually thinking about taking out the separate fuel tank and just draw the diesel directly from my main fuel tank maybe that's a project for the summer i don't really want to do it right now because it's still quite cold and i'm still using my diesel heater at night just to take the edge off <laughs> I hope that kind of answers your question anyway. Now here's some interesting advice and this comes from Big Aldo. A good alternative for a pea bottle is a large fabric softener bottle, e.g. Comfort or Lenore. Other products are available. Large capacity and wide neck gives a whole new meaning to comfort break. <laughs> and then Gaz goes on to say, Big Aldo, I find those Lenore and Comfort bottle necks too narrow. Yeah, right. <laughs> We've got a bit of a peeing competition going on here. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> now, talking about free stuff, I literally just got an email from a company that makes paddle boards. Do you think I should accept their free offer of a paddle board so that I could do a review of a stand-up paddle board? <laughs> I've already returned one company down. I'll just quickly show you what they look like. $700. Maybe they're an American company. There we go. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think I should do a paddleboard video review? Is that something that would interest you? Do you think that would be entertaining? Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Right, let's carry on with this week's Waffle on a Wednesday. We're nearly there, by the way. Hashtag Waffle on a Wednesday. Hi, Mel. I think your videos are great. Well, thank you, William. That's very kind of you. I like the fact that you smile a lot. My question is... <laughs> With comments like this, how can I not smile? My question is, how do you heat water for tea and coffee and for washing? Thanks from Last of the Summer Wine. Well, William, it's quite simple, really. To heat my water, I simply use a kettle. It's as simple as that. It really is quite simple. Now, talking about kettles, I think it is time I had a cup of coffee. So if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, I do hope I earned your subscription. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. Ta-da for now.